Hi everybody, Ziv Simon here. I'm the creator of Surgical Master. Welcome to this video. I'm inside a program I created called Speak CT. Speaking CT is really important, understanding the CT language, being able to read the CT scan, analyze it at a good level, uh, being able to plan off it, use it in a computer-guided software, and understanding the different structures are critical skills every dentist needs to have. And this is why I created this program where I teach dentists uh, in a very simple way how to read CT scans, how to go over the different anatomical structures, what are the important structures uh, that can cause problems in implant placement or other surgeries. And part of this program is a section called, What is This? And I'm inside this section right now where doctors send me different uh, radiographs and parts of CT scans uh, for my commentary and my feedback, and we start interacting. The nice thing about this platform is that it's dedicated for uh, CT scan analysis and learning how to be better at CT scan uh, reading, which, which is a problem a lot of dentists are having. And this is why I created that. So I'm going to go into uh, one of these sections called Opinion on Two Premolar Implant Planning. A doctor from uh, Ontario, Canada, uh, sent me a case. We planned uh, two implants in the upper premolar position. And he did a good job considering also the compromised sites. There were some issues with bone height and bone quality. And I gave him some feedback here on the platform that I wanted to share with you as well. So he's planning uh, two implants in the uh, upper premolar position. And in one side, on the upper right-hand side, uh, you are seeing the bucca, bucca palatal position right here. Now, the ridge is relatively intact in terms of the cortical plate, but you can see that this position is not for screw access. It is more for cementable. The question is, can this be improved? And in my opinion, no. This is, uh, this is the ridge that you can work with. Uh, the deficiency, if you're looking here, is more on the palate. There's almost like a little segment missing. So ideally, I would have loved to see this implant rotated a little bit more to the palate but you can do it only so much without blowing out the palatal plate. So I think considering this site, if the patient is not up for augmentation, which is probably not necessary, I would certainly go with this position. You can probably tilt it another three to five degrees to the palate without compromising the buccal plate. And, but you'll still have to use a cementable restoration or you can use a tilted screw technology that will allow you to create a screw access restoration uh, by, by using the, the tilted screw. But I think you're dealing with a deficient ridge and I think this is the best one can do. Now, uh, make sure that you look at the sinus pathology on in the right sinus. There's something that looks like a large mucosal. I would definitely refer to a an ENT. I would definitely refer to an ENT for an opinion. Uh, it's probably coming from the molar position. So there is a vertical defect right in here and there's probably an infection communicating with the sinus. So you need to be careful in regards to implant positioning. Um, you, you may want to address this pathology uh, before you move forward with the implant. You sent me also the implant dimensions that look very reasonable in terms of diameter, 375 for premolar is good. One is 10 millimeters on the upper right hand side, the other one is eight millimeters. So take, let's take a look at that. Okay, so the premolar on the upper right hand side, uh, the positioning is great in terms of screw axis. I would probably move, uh, tilt the implant a little bit slightly to the buckle. So you are coming out right, right from the central fossa. The bone quality on the buckle is not 100%, so you have to be careful in terms of stability. So where are you gonna get your stability from? Mostly the apical area, which is cortical bone. And basically, you'll be engaging the floor of the sinus. You can tell that there is a 
compartment here in the sinus. It's totally fine. You don't need to uh, get in there. But it's a nice, uh, it's a good observation. Sometimes you see a hint of it in the panoramic view right in here. But actually, this is going to be a blessing in disguise because this is where you can anchor your implant and get additional stability considering the poor quality. So two things uh, to get good in initial stability. Uh, don't over prepare, actually under prepare uh, the osteotomy. Go with one less drill and definitely engage into this apical area. I think your length is, uh, is great. I don't think you can go with any uh, longer implant. You want to be at the breast or slightly below. So I think this implant is good to go. So good luck with this implant surgery. Let me know how it goes. Leave some comments and questions below. And for the doctors watching this on social media, feel free to share this video. I just shared with you my feedback uh, with a doctor in the Speak CT program, which is an online program on reading CT scans. If you don't feel comfortable even looking at the CT scan, if you don't understand what are the different sections and structures you're looking at, and yet you want to place implants, you need to learn the CT language. You need to speak CT. And I hope to share with you this program in the future. This is Dr. Zeev Simon from Surgical Master.